Morning, everyone. I am running late today. <laughs> I'll give it a few moments. I'm, what, eight minutes behind, so let you guys catch your notifications that we're on. Found my water. If you are on, go ahead and shoot me a message so I know you're here. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm glad you made it. How are you, Amanda? Coffee is currently brewing. I slacked on the coffee today. I decided to break out my juicer instead because I'm just itching to have garden vegetables to juice. Um, am I earlier than usual? No, Alex. I'm later than normal, and you know that. But it's been a while, okay? I've been doing good. I made green juice today. Can't spill it. This is my coffee. Mm. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Daisy. The party can start. Finally, Christina, let's get going. Toronto. I love seeing where you guys are all from. In Vernus, Florida. I've never heard of that city in Florida. I'm heading to Central Florida soon. In 15 days, actually. Is that, are any of you guys from... What am I, Central? I'm heading to the villages. Central Florida, is that Southern Florida? I don't know. Um, cool, cool. Glad you are all here. How is everything going? How are your plant starts? Obviously, guys, I did not look at the camera before I started. How are the plants going? In Memphis, Memphis, Michigan, or Tennessee? Because Memphis, Michigan is basically where my farm is. Um, Southwest Michigan, Alberta. You guys are awesome. Syracuse. Lo is it Lothian, Maryland? Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm going to Disney this go around, but next time I'll let you know. Just bought two apple trees. Going to plant them today. Nice. I'm trying to decide what trees I want to add this year. I haven't, haven't figured that out quite yet. Southwest Louisiana. It's like roll call, guys. Ah, Memphis, Tennessee. That's pretty cool, too, though. <laughs> Memphis, Tennessee is way cooler than Tennessee and Michigan. Or, goodness, Memphis and Michigan. There we go. Okay, strawberry seeds started, but they aren't thriving. Can you tell me a little more about that? What do you mean that they are not thriving? Is Are they looking weak? Do you have a fan on them? How long have they been growing? Any true leaves? Tell me more. What part of Michigan are you guys from? So we're Southeast Michigan. Is that good for you? We're like right here. Good morning, good morning. My plant starts look like seeds in packaging. <laughs> cool, cool. Good, Christina. You know what? Some of mine do too. You're not alone. I have so much I still need to start. Um, like so much. <laughs> but it's coming along. It'll all come together. This weekend, I've decided everything needs to be started by the end of this weekend for me because I'm running out of time here. And space. I'm running out of space and time. But it's fine. The sprout, half an inch, no true leaves. Then they fall over. Okay. So I want you to look right at, and actually, I I thought about talking about this today. I'm wondering if their stems are rotting. So it would be right at the soil line. You'll see, you'll basically see the stem start to go in and be very thin right at the soil line. It's called damping off. Um, are you, how's your watering? Is, are they constantly wet? Maybe too much water? I'd like to see a picture of it, but that's my first guess, is that too much water might have caused damping off. 
Good morning from Alaska. Ugh, I need to get back to Alaska. Uh, it's been, I think, it's 10 years since I've been there. My cousins used to live there, and I went and visited them once. Oh, it's the most beautiful place ever. Reputable mail order seed companies that will send to Australia. You know what? Honestly, I'm not sure. It's not typically us. It's um, Australia won't allow. It's your country's rules. They won't allow seeds to come in. Um, they get stopped at the border. So it doesn't matter who, uh, you know, who we are, who's sending them to you. It's Australia stopping them. Um, you may have to find a local source. Local as in, in Australia, unfortunately, because we would love to send it to you if it didn't keep coming back to us. <laughs> Are we ever looking to expand our team? I mean, we're always looking for solid people. Are you, are you, are you in Michigan? <laughs> um, yeah, fungus gnats can do that to seedlings too. Good point. Sorry for all the orders. I went crazy. Are you like me, Jonah? I uh, will go and put an order in, and then I'll go back and be like, oh, I forgot something. I'll just do another one real quick. And then I forgot something. So like, and I have like seven orders in, and I'm like, just combine them, please. <laughs> Dying or stalling. Turned out I bought seed starting mix that was tainted with herbicides. Yeah, that's a possibility. I try to, you know, I, I try to look at reviews. I aim for organic um, for all my seed starting mixes because getting hit with herbicides right off the bat is unfortunate, but it's definitely a problem. Okay, hold on. I saw that. Let me go back. They're uh, staying moist for quite a while. I think that may be the problem. Do you recommend... A small fan for ventilation. Okay, so I always recommend, insist on you having a fan in the room where your plants are growing. You don't want it directly on your plants. You want, you want it oscillating in the room so that way it's just moving around the air. If your plants are staying wet that long, um, is there enough drainage in whatever you're planting them in? That would be my next look. Because you... If there's not enough drainage, you're just going to be running into this problem over and over. Um, so drainage is actually a tool for you because then you don't have to focus on it quite so hard. Oh, <laughs> gee. Did the UPS get their bin back? Of course they did. Okay. They got their bin back. I cleaned it. They're fine. <laughs> uh, you guys are a hoot. Any idea why my live streams don't work? As in, you're not catching on my end or you're trying to do a live stream? Help me out. Also, I don't know why I'm even, I don't know. I'm not technically sound. All of you who have been here from the beginning know that, that technology and I just, we're not friends. Wicked Awesome Gardening, I'd let you buy more seeds. I don't know who's limiting you, but I think you could do it. Okay, have you had problems with sending orders to Canada? No, no, we can send to Canada. Um, I know it's a little more involved, but we send to Canada every day, so we don't really have a problem with that. I can see the chat but the screen is black and stuck loading. Uh, I would refresh it. Can everyone else see me? Someone's having whew, a little trouble. Oh, she's back to sleep. Well, Christina, at least I got you up for this. Okay, so Mrs. and my gardener wanted me to show you this awesome new line we are carrying. We decided, well, she, Okay, Mrs. Emma Gardner is like the mastermind behind Emma Gardner aesthetic. And she's so good at it. Um, and she was like, we need candles. <laughs> oh, good. Thanks, Nurse Star. Okay, so we have three different candles that she wanted me to tell you about real quick. We're going for it. 
I'm pretty sure when she describes them, she talks about garden memories. So like that was her idea, a scent that kind of brings you back to the garden. This one is flower fields. Hmm. What is it? Yeah, roses. That's why I smell. Rose, lilacs, and green leaves. So there's this. These we're launching these today, I believe, which is why she wanted me to drop these on. Do you have a storefront in Port Huron or have tours? We do have a storefront in Port Huron, 227 Huron Avenue. Um, this one's weird. It's like it makes sense in my head before I even read it, but. Okay, so tomato harvest. You know that, that smell of tomatoes, like we, whether you're picking them off or you accidentally break a stem and you can, that aroma kind of just hits you in the face? That's what this smells like. I don't know how they did this, but it does. And it has basil in it too. This is amazing. Into ground versus planters, also soil mix and mulching. Can you go over the pros and cons of, okay. Um, are you talking about bare root plants, Natalia? Is your store truck friendly? As in, you drive it, what kind of truck are we talking? Are we talking like a truck truck or like a rig? Rig would be a challenge. Um, okay, planting strawberries. I do both. I do in-ground and container. I don't necessarily think there's, as long as you have de decent soil and good drainage, um, I don't see any problem in planting them in the ground. Now, I like planting them in containers, especially those, um, I drive a semi. There, Jack, there are, there are like large parking lots around here. You just may have to walk, you know, under a mile for sure. Oh, you know what? The bus stop. You could park over there and walk across the street. It's possible, Jack. Come see us anyways. We'll figure it out. Um, as long as you have good soil, there's no reason in planting them. No reason you can't plant strawberries one or the other. I like the towers. Um, I get them at the Dollar Tree. If you have a Dollar Tree by you, uh, they should be going on sale like now-ish. And I use those for my strawberries and herbs, and they're just a ton of fun. You can move them. Uh, it really utilizes your space because you're growing upwards. So that's good. Okay, the last one. I gotta show you the last one. Oh, that's actually really refreshing. It's garden lemonade, and it's mint, cucumber, and lemon zest. Huh. Actually. I think I need that one. That one's lovely. Okay. Um, those are launching today. And so you can check those out on our website. I think this afternoon, probably. Tell me more about your plants. So right now, my biggest problem is I'm, like I've told you last week, I'm in an apartment now. And my big problem is keeping the humidity in my room at a good enough level like I'm, my plants are drying out way faster than i'm used to uh, so i now have two humidifiers going in the room just to keep it at um like an appropriate level are they paraffin or soy good question they're made here oh they're soy 100 percent soy wax candles they're made here in port huron uh, a local gal does candles called creep house candles and um her candles are phenomenal. So yes, I'm having trouble with the humidity in my room. Um, I'm trying to keep the temperature a little higher so that way it doesn't dry out so fast, but that's where I'm struggling. When Luke mentioned the candles, I hoped for, I had a body spray years ago that smelled like tomatoes. Interesting, where'd you find that? This one does, Randy. It's hard to explain, but it's like, it's like right at the end of it. It smells like a tomato plant. I think that's impressive. Yeah, Aldi also does carry those tiered towers we were talking about for strawberries. Um, that's another good place to get them. 
I've ordered some off Amazon before. Um, I love growing in them. Even though I have the two acres, you know, my farm's on, anything that I can get to grow up is great. I have green stocks too. Some of you who know about that company, they're a US made company. Um, I have two green stock towers and those are incredible as well. All her candles are hand poured, 100% soy wax, cotton wicks, and include scents that are free of major toxins. Yes. So good. My wildflower memory is the smell of Indian paintbrush. Okay, that's awesome. They, oh, Heather, I'm so glad you you brought that up. Is anyone growing onions? And if so, have you been have you trimmed them? Have you given them a haircut yet? As onions grow, especially from seed, they'll get really spindly. Um, and once you chop off, give them a haircut, like a buzz right across, you know, um, that will help them grow in much stronger. Herbs have sprouted. Tomatoes start next weekend. How long does it take sweet potatoes to start sprouting? On soil, roots formed, warm under lights, six weeks. So they've been warm under, it, they take a while um, to get their sprouts. I'm guessing if you have the roots, you'll start seeing sprouts within the next two weeks. Keep them warm. They do like that. Um, and make sure they have enough humidity. You should see it, yeah, in two weeks. Just planted my onions yesterday. Nice, North Star. North Star always knows the details, Christina. That's why we love them so much. Exactly. Invaluable. Perfect word. True. Trimmed them once already. We'll do it again in a day or so. Yeah, and you can keep doing it as they go out. Um, onions will keep growing as long as they have roots. Bunching onions too. Yeah, I, I trim all my onions. I trim my chives, any of the alliums like that. I trim and give them a haircut. And they just perk right back up and keep going. Oh... Oh no, Nathan, grew my first peanut plant I got from you guys. Did great till a mouse or two got in my indoor garden and destroyed a lot of my crops. Um, I, I want to grow a patch of peanuts this year. I think, okay, for those of you who don't know, we sell peanut seeds, which are peanuts. Um, did you know peanuts grow underground? I did not know that until I started working here. Granted, I never looked into it, but I did not know that. Be honest. Tell me. Did you know or not? I need to know. Yeah, onions, any of those alliums, those cool, hardy crops, a lot of areas, you can get those outside very soon, if not already. Um, I was hoping to get mine out this last week, but they'll probably go out this week. I was... Um, too many things to tackle at once, of course. So we have a week of basically 50s during the day, which I know Michigan's just teasing us and it's going to turn into a polar vortex again, but it's fine. Um, I think mine are probably heading out this week. How high does the onion need to be when you trim them? Chester County, good question. I typically, when I trim, I'm kind of going to go in reverse. When I trim them, I like to leave like a good, what is that, three inches maybe of my plant. Um, so above that. Some may trim them lower. That's just how I've done it. You can eat the onion trimmings. Yes, if you did not know that, make sure you keep them and toss them in your meal that day. Which literally means ground nuts. So it makes sense to me. Interesting. Alexander, I would love to know how you pronounce that too. I'm not even going to try because I don't know what sound. It looks like an O with a line through it. I don't know what sound that makes. So if anyone wants to know, the Danish word for peanut means ground nut. I didn't know that until squirrels planted one in a planter and I found it, pulled it out, and there were peanuts. That's hysterical. My fall planted onions are doing really well. They've all sprouted. They're all up and going. They need a haircut. So that's on my list. Um, today's Tuesday. I have bee meeting today. Tomorrow I'll be at the farm. 
Um, and they're, yeah, they will be getting a nice haircut. I'm excited to see if they bulb up quicker than the rest. So this is how my year planned out. It wasn't necessarily my intention, but this is what I did for my onions. I planted some in the fall, doing great. I started some in the house, but later than I typically like to. So I kind of freaked myself out and got starts from Dixondale again too, just in case, because uh, I cannot not have an onion crop. So, um, but it was good because this is my first time experimenting with the fall onions. And it's also my first time, I've done onions from inside before, but this is the first time I'm trying to do a full crop of them. Um, and so I basically just wanted to make sure I had a fail safe. So I did order from Dixondale, who's an incredible company. Uh, I did them last year. My onions were amazing. So if you're looking for, you know, your onions got started late or you want to fail safe, Dixondale is great. Uncle, when I was a kid and there was a peanut farmer next to his property. Oh, that's so cool. I'm a gardener. Same with garlic. Are you talking about trimming your garlic? That's a good question. I don't trim my garlic. Um, I'm trying to think. I know I don't trim it for like more growth until like the end of the season. When I take scapes off, when those are gone, I'll, I can, I'll trim them and usually use the tops because I want it to focus more on the bulbs, but I don't do it right off the bat. And I don't know if anyone else does. Hey Denise, how are you from St. Louis? <laughs> you didn't miss too much, you're fine. Uh, Michigan he says trim onions after they are six to seven inches tall down to four inches. That's pretty close, I'd probably go closer to three, but um, I mean, even like in my fridge right now, I always have a jar of green onions. I trim those things all the way down and let them regrow. They don't need much. Onions are incredible. And if you do not have a revolving jar of onions in your fridge, you need to. I planted carrots and onions outside in the ground for the first time ever. Congratulations. I'm so excited to see how they do. Use Luke's method of pre-sprouting eggplant, peppers, tomatoes in small plastic pots, uh, like used for jello shots, and good success. That's awesome. I don't do a ton with pre-sprouting. I did it a little bit for my flowers this year, um, more or less because my setup was taking too long and I knew I needed to get some seeds going. And I do okay with it, but because it's not right in my face, I forget about it sometimes. And so like I had a bag sprout and then died because I forgot I left it where I left it. Um, so it's just not my thing. Curried peanuts. Okay. Speaking of Florida, I tried, how do you have a jar of revolving onions in your fridge? I'll answer that in a moment. I tried boiled peanuts for the first time and dang, those are good. <laughs> I know some people have mixed feelings. Okay. So green onions is what I use for my onions in the fridge. And I have a mason jar. And um, these ones I got from, I got organic green onions from the store that have, of course, the bulb on it, right? And you cut off what you need at the top and then you just submerge the roots into water. They will, their roots will get super strong. Even if when you're purchasing them, they don't look like they have many roots on them. Do it anyways, because it'll grow new roots. And I trim everything but the new green that's coming up until it's tall enough so it's always in my fridge and usually like once every other week i'll take the onions and i'll go put them in the windowsill so they can get a little light but it's amazing how well they do in the fridge without needing any light so carrots are hard for me i'm i'm gonna nail them this year i'm nailing it do you do any companion planting? Nathan, what I do, um, I do a lot of interplanting for different, different reasons. So when you look into companion planting, a big issue is that there are, there are so many, there's so much info out there that contradicts 
other information and it puts you in a place where you're like, now what do I do, right? Because it'll say, plant onions next to this, but and then the next one will say, don't plant onions next to this. You'll just be so confused. I do a lot of interplanting for space management and pest management. Those are my reasons. For instance, um, I plant basil in between all of my tomatoes. I also do onions by majority of my greens. Actually, I will put onions everywhere. Any type of allium, chives, your garlic chives, your onions, your garlic. Sure, it's great to have one bed of just onions and that looks really clean and uniform. But if you're able to space them all around your garden, what you're doing is you're creating a natural barrier for a lot of um, four-legged pests, including, but also including bugs. Um, alliums have anything that has a really strong aromatic uh, scent to it will help deter these pests. And that's why I'm putting them everywhere. Uh, a lot of my herbs, the one, those that are very aromatic, I also get those and spread them out all over my garden as well. Um, and then I like to use plants for structure too. So I can put like a strong stemmed plant and a climbing plant together. You know, think of the three sisters. That's a great one. Um, so you have your corn as your structure. You have your a pole bean as your climber. And typically they put a squash or something, anything uh, ground covering to do just that, to cover your ground and to maintain moisture cool soil, um, eliminate erosion. So yes, I do a lot of interplanting. I change the water once a week. I saw it real fast and then it ran away. Do you put anything in the water? No, it's just water. Just water. Oh, I also just started it with leeks too. So I'll let you know how that goes. I have a jar of leeks where I cut the tops off and the bottom is rooted in water. Oh, one carrot. <laughs> okay, I love this. Okay, who's your pioneer? Found and ate one carrot yesterday from a 75 foot bed last year. I bet you that was the best carrot ever, though. That sounds like a triumph to me. What? When I washed my carrots last fall, the entire carrot just dissolved. I have ne has that happened to anyone before? I've never heard of that. I don't know what would cause that. Um, I do know there's root eating pests out there who will eat through them. So maybe like the pests ate through the core and it just didn't have the ability to stand together. But that's going to be my, my biggest guess. Oh, that's terrible. You can find companion plant growing on Google. Right, you can, you can. There are so many sources out there for companion planting. The issue is, is that each source contradicts the next source. Sure, there's some tried and true ones, but you know, I'll, and I'm, I'm making this up off the top of my head, I'm telling you, but it'll be like, don't plant your celery next to your green beans. And why? They don't necessarily hurt. Um, like celery doesn't put off anything in particular to hurt the other. Some of them, I think, I think it's easy to get stuck in your head when researching companion planting. My best advice is to spread out your aromatic plants and all over, mix them in because that will do great wonders for space and keeping pests away. I'm trying to think of what other plants that I'm like, I definitely do this with. You know, we've talked a lot about interplanting, intercropping, trap cropping. Um, nasturtiums are a good trap crop. Dill is a good trap crop. Um, I do like to plant. I, I learned this one. I do like to plant, excuse me, um, onions with my root vegetables. And that is a way to help keep those root pests away. Um, so I do that as well. Yeah, so don't get over, don't overthink interplanting and companion planting. Don't overthink it. Can you plant potatoes in sawdust? Linda. 
Um, I'm thinking it might be too light. Sawdust doesn't hold on to the moisture as well. Potatoes do not like to dry out. Um, and I'm wondering if it's too light and fluffy that it's going to let sunlight through because you don't want sunlight to get down to your roots. If you can, I would get at minimum mulch. I would get more of like a wood chip mulch. Not treated, not colored, not any of that. But I haven't done it. You can run the experiment and let us know too. That would be awesome. Okay, when planting asparagus crowns, I've seen videos where the crown is left above the ground and ones that show the crown completely covered. I don't have experience. I'd cover them. So what I do, I, I dig a six inch trench. I make like a three inch mound in my trench. And if you have not seen an asparagus crown, it looks like an octopus, right? So it has a top and um, it has all of these legs, their roots that go down. And so I splale the octopus right over the mound that I do in my trench, and then I cover them up. Now it makes it so, maybe it's a four inch mound. I don't know, you don't want them so far underground. I put them about two inches underground, and that's how I've always done my asparagus. Thanks, Denise. I see no problem in putting really tall plants into the ground, especially tomato plants, Denise, because remember, tomato plants grow auxiliary roots all along its stem. Anywhere that it can have contact with soil or moisture, you'll start seeing these um, little nubs break out from the stem. That's it wanting to grow roots. So I usually am putting out at minimum a foot tall tomato plants, minimum, by the time I get them in the ground. But what I do is either I dig them straight down and I submerge all of the plant except the top crown. You do not want to take the crown off because that'll stop it from growing upward. I take off all the branches up the side and I plant all the way down to the, gr uh, the crown. So I have close to a foot submerged underground. That's going to that's gonna build me such a strong root system. That way when my plant is ginormous, you know, in August and September, it has the ability to hold it up and to get the nutrients it needs to feed all of those tomatoes on that plant. Um, so there is no problem. You, Like I said, you could dig it straight down or I've tried the trenching method lately where you basically, so if you have a tomato plant, you can lay it lengthwise and kind of bend up just slightly. You don't want to break your plant, so you got to be careful, but you can kind of curve it up um, and that works very well too. I know this was kind of just a catch-up day, and I appreciate you guys being here. So if you have any questions, put them in all caps. Let's let's knock these out. And then I'm thinking we're probably going to start, start getting into like early pest either next week or the week after um, because I want us to be on top of it before the pests get here, right? So that way we are prepared. Um, okay. Okay. Sawdust did that one. My carrots are still. When do you plant your tomatoes outside in Michigan? Hmm. <laughs> Depends on how much of a gambler I am at the time. Typically, it's after Mother's Day. Our last frost is Mother's Day. And I think it's the 11th, actually. And Mother's Day is uh, normally on my birthday or at least the day before. So the 13th or the 14th. Um, that's probably when I will be planting them out. Now that does not mean I will not have to go out and toss a frost coat, frost cloth over them maybe a night in case Michigan decides to be mean to me and give me a late frost. Um, so I have no problem putting them out, but be prepared enough to know if you need to cover them, just cover them. Because you will be heartbroken if you lose them all. If you don't have that in place or something that you can easily do, like when I toss all my afghans out on the garden, I've done it before. If you don't have the ability to do that, wait a week and get it out when you know you have a 10 day forecast um, above freezing. <laughs> do I know if scorpions cause problems in the garden? Well, luckily we don't have those here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, actually. Has anyone else living in an area where scorpions are, um, prevalent? 
Do you guys have trouble with scorpions in the garden? Is it too late to plant garlic? I stratified it in the fridge for a few weeks. I'm just concerned it won't bulb up. My last frost date is April 30th. Well, April 30th, that's in two weeks. Kira, how are you going to know unless you try it? The fact that you, sh if you had not stratified it, I'd probably say, ooh, might be too late. The fact you did stratify it, I would say go for it. Your last frost date is in two weeks, but odds are you'll probably have a last a frost after that, at least if you're anything like Michigan, um, where it's usually off a week. Put it in the ground. Or if you're, you're afraid of, you know, wasting too much of it, remember it's never a waste. It will feed your soil. That's great. Um, but if you're concerned, plant some of it and eat the other half. But I would say go for it. My last frost is mid-May. What cheap, affordable grow bulbs do you recommend? Keep plants alive until then. I have tomatoes started. Okay, so I had just... I'm not logged on to Wi-Fi. Okay, I just looked this up again last night because I needed a couple new grow lights. When I go to Amazon, um, I typically type in, let's see, ooh, two bulb linkable grow lights. Now you're looking for your at least... We'll see if it comes up this time. I had trouble last night. So one, it of course makes me so excited that so many people are using grow lights, right? But on the other hand, I'm like, I really need grow lights. <laughs> Don't buy them all. That's okay, I got my ordered. Okay, so this one I just found, 500 Calvin. Let's see how many things I can knock over in this. We're in turn you too, okay. Oh, can you see Luke in the corner? Hey, Luke. I don't know if I'll be able to, if you guys can see this at all, though. Maybe if I turn down the brightness. Okay, so I do, I'll just talk about it anyways. I do linkable, there, now we can almost see, right? There we go. Linkable grow lights. So they're two bulb is what I like to get because it uh, the single bulb doesn't expand up across a 1020 tray. Um, I usually get stretchy plants toward the bulb if I'm using a 1020 tray and a single bulb grow light. I like two bulbs. Now, I like getting them linkable. I bought linkable from two different sources and they link together just fine. Um, obviously, I think that's great. You, you only have so many plugs in your house, so linkable is the way to go. And you're looking at five to 6,000 at least, Calvin, for... Um, yeah, for your Calvin to be able to grow indoors. And uh, let's see. Goodness, guys, I just drew like a big blank. What's the other one? Calvin and, uh, oh, your lumens. So you want to check for your lumens too. Like this one doesn't have it marked. These are the ones I just bought last night. Um, I'm not worried about it. Calvin is what I pay attention to the most. So five to 6,000. Bring you back. So yeah. Amazon is the way to go. It's, what, typically two-day shipping for the most part. Uh, these ones say two-day shipping. But two bulb linkable grow lights. Okay. Um, I got three more minutes. My friend in Southern California had an issue with scorpions biting her dogs, but no plants. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Um, uh, not really hot. Okay. Can she put milk? Oh, I must have. Oh, are you talking garden girl? Are you talking about the, she said, can you put it in milk cartons and winter sew it? What you talking about? Not the garlic, right? Because I wouldn't even do that step. I would go right into the ground if you are talking about garlic. And if you're not, sorry, I missed it. Um, do, do, do. I found some linkable lights at Sam's Club. 500 watts and 5,000 Kelvin. Garden girl, how many how many fixtures were in it? And do you mind telling me what you paid for them? Because 
This girl's always looking for more. I'm going to look there. Do you have any good ideas on removing seedlings from winter jugs? Removing seedlings. So you cut the top of your jug off, correct? Or at minimum three quarter around so you can, you know, like open it like a clamshell. Remember when you're taking seedlings out, you know, people are so um, cautious when it comes to disturbing the roots. But in reality, you got to be pretty rough on them to really make them mad. Um, so yes, you want to be gentle, but don't be so gentle that you're going to be wasting seedlings. I'm not a fan of thinning. I don't like it. I would rather transplant because that's just a whole nother plant, even if I don't have room. Um, so the nice thing about the jug is that if you have enough of a root system built, the soil most likely will come out in a heap. And if that if it does happen that way, great. If it doesn't, just tease them out one by one. But if you're able to get your soil out in a heap or a couple heaps, um, usually I use like a cookie tray and I just put the heap there and I start working them apart. And as soon as I get them apart, then I can transplant them up or out into the garden, whatever I'm doing. When do I uncover garlic in central Illinois? Um, honestly, I don't really, depends. What did you cover your garlic with? I covered mine with leaves and um, just yard clippings. And I probably won't uncover mine. Mine will stay as in and they'll pop up through it. It's not so thick that they won't be able to escape. Uh, they should be able to get out just fine. I just had like a bad dad joke go through my head about garlic escapes and escaping. That was huh, bad. Um, okay, Christine, I'm glad you brought that up. We're going to talk about this during pest. Do yellow flowers plants attract bad bugs? Yes. Yes, um, the, goodness, squash. So squash bugs and squash vine borers are attracted to the yellow flower. That's why you don't see them until your plant starts blooming. What I have found to work is I ordered myself a pack of durable yellow party snack bowls. And yes, it's bringing plastic, plastic into my garden, but this is my second year getting use out of them. And I think that's pretty good. So I just had them on the ground around my garden last year and I'd put just a little bit of water in them and a little squirted on dish soap is usually what I put in them. Uh, the bugs will land in them and they can't get out. Uh, so that is what I've been using. Now you wanna get these yellow bowls out into your garden before your squash start to bloom. You, you want them to find those instead of your plants. Uh, so that is very helpful. Honestly, it worked great. I think this year I'm going to put them, raise them up a little bit or somehow stake them, stake them so they stay in place better. But yeah, um, escape. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> uh, hey, Candace. Anyone aware of cutting swaps in Michigan or a place to find them online? What kind of cuttings are you looking for? The girl lights were 20, 100 lumens. It is four foot, two lights, five year warranty. Interesting. I'm going to look into that. Thank you. All right. We're going to wrap it up, friends. Is it too early to start tomatoes? Nope. Do it. Especially your peppers. Peppers take a little longer. Um, so for sure, get those started. And then once you finish those, start your tomatoes. And you will be just fine. What time? Actually, it's mid March. Start your peppers. You could wait a week on tomatoes if you wanted to. It depends on how big you want your plants to get, I guess. I got to be careful on that sometimes. Any advice for vine borers? Uh, I wrap the base of my squash plants in aluminum foil. Also, putting basically putting garbage into my garden. I know. But I always take it out. And as long as you can block the base of the plant... I get way less destruction from vine borers. It's one of those weird old wives tales that I have taken on. And so I'm gonna do it until I find something else to do. Cool. Fruit, creative trees. I guys just have random words in here. Potatoes, what about potatoes? You gotta give me more than that. 
Um, earwigs don't like pepper, and so I use cayenne pepper on them. Tanya, you got to remember, remind me where you are. Um, strawberries can go out before your last frost. Um, but if you're going to have too many frosts and some pretty hard ones, I would cover them. So put them in your green stock and then cover them. Awesome. All right, guys, we are all done. Um, I have someone at the door, so I'm going to run out of here. Uh, garden for the, what did you, oh, yellow bowls just off Amazon, just yellow snack bowls. Um, and that would work just fine. Okay. All done for the day. I will catch you guys next week. I hope you have a wonderful week and keep me updated on what you guys are growing. Have